I see a lot of companies. That's what I do now for a living, I guess. Um, flying to Asia, having 25 <laughs> meetings in five days. But one thing that I think is, is really interesting in the context of Kafka is that um, the uh, Kafka comes always up as soon as it's about an IoT conversation. Yeah, yeah. Right. So w where do you guys stand there? Is that like your biggest um, customer base and user base now? Or is Kafka enabling that whole wave, that tsunami of IoT uh, data yeah, analytics here's, use cases? Yeah, here's how I see it. I mean, the... You know, our frame for understanding this stuff is always interesting. To me, what's, you know, what web companies that were doing that was different mm -hmm. was they had this very digital product, and so they, they measured it in a, you know, in a very fine-grained way. And the result of that measurement was they knew a lot about what was happening in their business, and they had a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, you know, when people talk about IoT, there's four or five things happening. But the big one that I understand and that's very relevant with respect to Kafka and stream processing and I think what you're seeing and talking about is companies that are not you know, web companies are basically doing the same thing. They're basically instrumenting some part of the business. Exactly. Um, and the, you know, the, the technology required for that instrumentation is much harder. It's not like JavaScript tracking or whatever, yeah. right? It's a, it's a little bit more intense than that. But the uses of that are exactly what you would see in web companies. So one, you know, much more fine-grained analytics about what's happening, mm -hmm. and two, a whole set of kind of feedback loops and data-driven products and mm -hmm. whatever that kind of go back into what it is that they try and do. And so you see it with car companies, you see it with these, you know, interesting set-top box things. You yeah. see, I mean, just like really across a bunch of different verticals. Um, and, but, I, but I think it actually fits very nicely into that. Then there's a whole, you know, there's a whole set of technical problems that are associated with that that have nothing to do with Kafka and stream processing, which mm -hmm. are about, you know, how do you make uh, little digital sensors that are cheap to put on mm -hmm. things in a store? And, you know, I, I know nothing about that. But, but the actual, um, you know, what happens when you have these really large streams of event data that um, you're centralizing and you're trying to process and drive some value out of? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a problem we know a ton about. It looks exactly like what web companies have been doing for a while, except it's often even a little bigger. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, orders of magnitude bigger, but it's big. Um, and, you yeah, know, the use cases are actually very similar in that they, you know, they typically are a type of monitoring mm -hmm. or reporting or real-time analytics or whatever. And the use of that is often, you know, either internally, like, hey, how are we performing? Uh, or, you know, fed back to the user in some way and, you know, what's wrong with your car, <laughs> right? Which yeah. is analytics for you, the, the owner of the car. Yeah, yeah. hopefully um, that's as, re as much real time as possible uh, around cars, right? Um, yeah, that's right. And you can, you, can, you can see exactly why there's a pressure for it to be real time. A, you know, it just makes sense. B, if you're the owner of the car, it's not like you're that interested in figuring out why your car isn't working like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're over on the side of the road, you want to like pull you it out, know. Them yeah. out, right? Yeah. The, the people actually are not super understanding um, about batch computing, like yeah. consumers. They don't really, they don't Who really care about that, yeah. right? I want a solution right now, exactly. Yeah. Um, what's